Hello guys, are we the mighty and the few this morning? Hello, I guess we are. <laughs> I think we are. How's everybody doing? Good afternoon. <laughs> Happy Monday, everybody. Happy Monday to you, too. Can you hear me? Awesome. First try. All right, we got a few folks on here. We'll give it another minute or two. I know folks are awful busy right now.
Okay, gang, we will go ahead and get started. I know we've only got a few on the call today, but that's that's okay. Uh, we are recording it as we always do, and we'll make it available afterwards for those that couldn't join us. Um, so this week, and for I think the next couple of weeks, our big priority at the association is getting our next live virtual event put together. Uh, I and Jessica are working on that. In fact, I had a call this morning with our uh, opening speaker. I know Jessica has been in contact and having conversations with a lot of our other speakers and trainers. And so you'll see more of that information coming out. Uh, you haven't seen a registration yet because we have to wait until we get sort of in the sweet spot of time. Uh, too early and people forget about it. Too late, people don't have time to do it. So about that four, five, six week space is when you will see that information coming out. I will also be sending each of you that have registrations left over from last year that you had already paid for, I'll let you know how many slots you have. Um, the people may not be the same. So instead of telling you the people names on the list, I'm just gonna tell you the number of slots that you have and you can determine how many from your team you would like to have. Um, as far as uh, registration, we are going to be charging a registration fee for the live virtual event this year. Uh, however, you're going to get a two for one out of that. Um, you, we're going to do a live virtual event in the spring, April 14th and 15th, and we're going to do a second live virtual event in the fall. So you're going to get sort of uh, more than you got last year, and hopefully after that we will be able to get back to in-person conferences. Um, Along those lines, when it comes to registrations, just be aware that we're trying to make sure that we've got um, as many opportunities for people to participate as possible. At the same time, though, if people are going to be seeking credit, because we will be offering credit again, just like we did in the fall for attendance and participation in these sessions, just remember that it's basically one, one participation, one credit per computer. So if you've got six people sitting around the computer, there's no way for us to verify who was there, you know what I mean? So we have to make sure that we've got some processes in place that verify the folks that are on there so that we can remain legitimate in the eyes of the institutions that we're saying or, or reporting to that, that people attended and got credit. So um, I will also share that we are doing with NHSA this year, a virtual Hill Day. I know that some of you have participated with us in the Winter Leadership Institute in DC, and we always go around and visit our congressional delegation, really good conversations. They always like to visit with the folks from their districts. Um, this year, we're gonna be doing that virtually, and that's gonna be on March the 10th. Now, the cool thing about this is that normally when we're doing these visits, we have to limit the number of people. You know, trying to squeeze into Brett Guthrie's office with 20 people, you just can't do it. Um, you've got to sort of, you know, you got to pick and choose and try to get folks just from the district. This time, however, we're going to be able to have as many folks on the line as we want because it's via Zoom. And the congressional offices are very used to doing this. The congressmen themselves are very used to doing this. So it presents a unique opportunity for us as Head Start to be interacting with these folks that we otherwise may not have had an opportunity to talk with before. So as that gets closer, you're gonna get more information about it probably later this week. Um, they are being set up right now as far as the time so we'll be able to share a schedule and just sort of a general access Zoom once we have that set up. So I would encourage everyone to participate in that to the extent that you can. Um, I know there has been some question about Region 4 Head Start Association and the awards that are going to be presented. Um, I was mistakenly under the impression that they were going to be awarded and recognized this week during the Region 4 uh, annual conference and training expo, which is happening online starting to, uh, the main conference is tomorrow, the 23rd through the 26th. If you haven't registered for that, I would encourage you to do so. I just took a look at the agenda a little while ago to refresh my memory, and they've got a lot of great stuff that I think people will find valuable. Uh, but about the awards, I was under the impression that they were going to be awarding them this week, and in fact, they're not. They're going to be doing a separate award ceremony uh, in April, and we will be able to release all of that information. They've got it quarantined until um, the 15th of March. So we'll be able to share after the 15th of March with everyone. Uh, we'll do some wide press releases and promotion about that as far as uh, who won and what they won. As I've mentioned before, Kentucky has won a third of the awards this year from Region 4, so that's fantastic. And we've got a couple that are moving on to the national level. Um, with that, let me turn to Jessica and see if she has any updates to share. Hey, everyone. Um, 
I sent an email out to all of the directors last week. Um, we are doing the KHSA grantee profiles, and we're going to put those on our website. And I just have some couple questions for each program. Um, so if you can just get back to me with that. Um, it's only like two or three questions, I think, for each one. And I've started working on those, and they are looking really great. Um, John, did you want to ask? about the sessions or do you want to do that no now? i was i was going to do that after, uh, after okay yeah. okay um yeah, so as far as those profiles are concerned one of the things that we're doing is we want to put them online um so that people can actually see who the grantees are uh, sort of know the impact that they're having the neat thing about them is that it's not just the numbers but we want to be able to tell a story or at least a couple of or maybe even a couple of stories from each one of the grantees you know sort of get that uh, get that perspective from a teacher get that perspective from a parent um, and really encapsulate that into the success stories that each grantee uh, has out there. The other thing we want to do with it, though, is we want to include it. This year, we're going to be doing an annual report at the end of the calendar year. And so I want to be able to include those grantee profiles in that annual report so that when someone looks at our association, they can look at that report, see the things that we're doing, and they can also see the good work that you're doing within your communities as the grantee. Um, okay, so with that, let me turn it over to Amanda. I know that she has a few updates that she has heard from the uh, national folks and some other stuff from GOEC. So, Amanda? Thanks, y'all. Hi, everybody. I hope everybody's staying warm. Um, hopefully, tomorrow we'll see some better weather and actually some sunshine and all the snow will finally start melting. Um, <clears throat> I did have a couple of updates for everyone about two weeks ago. Um, we were on a uh, webinar with um, the uh, folks on the federal level talking about the whistleblower statutes. Um, now, I'm not, I, I can't answer a ton of questions about it, but it was very clear. Um, they have changed some of those whistleblower laws, and any grantee, employee of a grantee can be covered um, under those whistleblower laws. So there are some very specific things that you have to go through. I will send everyone the PowerPoint that they presented to us, but they want to make sure that all the Head Start folks know and understand that their employees are covered um, under the whistleblower laws. And there are some specific steps if there is someone um, that you need to do. And as part of that, you also need to inform your staff that they are also covered under that whistleblower law. So as I said, I'll send out that PowerPoint. Any questions that you guys might have, I can help investigate. I know I'm not a lawyer. They had all the legal stuff while we were there, but they definitely were like, if you have questions, just reach out. So um, if you do, let me know and I can help uh, navigate that for you. <clears throat> the other uh, big piece is last week we were on a call with um, the National Head Start Collab offices, all of us were on one great big call. Um, and two, there was uh, the, the bulk of the conversation was around some of the reporting requirements that have been waived um, during COVID, um, specifically around um, the QRS, uh, QRISs across states, um, and also with the background checks. Um, from what I understand, those, that extension will not be extended past September 30th. So they are in the process of talking to folks to find out exactly how the federal government can kind of respond to the needs of states differently as they start to reinstitute those. Um, so we may be hearing some more information and have some more conversation around that. Um, so be looking out for that. So those are the two big updates on the federal side. Um, a couple of things that we're doing internally with the GOEC is, I don't know if everybody has heard about uh, the HRSA grant that was released back in December, the Health uh, Resource and Services Administration released a grant or opened a grant up for anybody to really apply for called the Early Childhood Comprehensive Systems Program. Um, and we are in the process of applying for that for that funding. It isn't, um, it's a five year grant. Um, it's not a whole heck of a lot of money, but it's really focused on that systems building that our office has always kind of had an idea about. So we're in the process of writing that. I spoke with John last week about the association um, providing us with a letter of support for that. 
We don't really have a whole lot to share around it yet. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to just give me a shout. Um, the grant itself is fo focused on maternal and child health. So really, we're looking at that prenatally to zero three on how we can do better for families um, with kiddos that young. So that that's uh, one of the big pieces that we're working on internally. Um, and hopefully before too long, we'll have some more information around the Early Childhood Institute. Um, we're in the process right now of figuring out what that's going to look like for 2021. Um, so we'll keep you guys up to date as we find out more information. I think that's, those are my top, top ones there, John. Excellent. Thank you. Um, yeah, and just so folks know, Amanda and I are staying in touch uh, throughout the week, and we have a regular uh, sort of face-to-face -face via Zoom meeting every Friday. So we're making sure that GOEC, the Head Start Collab Office, and the Association are, are uh, on the same page. Um, let's see, trying to think of anything else that's out there. Um, not off the top of my head. Um, oh, no, I know what I was going to say. Um, the Executive Committee, our KHSA Executive Committee, is actually going to be meeting this afternoon at 2 o'clock. And one of the things that we're going to be talking about is not only the conference, which we will discuss as a group here in a moment, but also talking about the new chairs of who might, you know, who might be interested in being a chair of our new sections that have been created under our new bylaws that were just adopted at the beginning of this month. So we do have six different sections and we're going to be having a chat about sort of who we think might be good. So if you know anyone uh, on your end that is interested, capable, and available to head up any of those groups that really has an interest, uh, we will be happy to, uh, to entertain those ideas. Um, but we're going to have an in-depth conversation about that today because our goal, of course, is to get those stood up as quickly as we can because that's really going to be the work. A lot of the work going forward will be driven by those different sections and the people that are participating there. Um, so along those lines, I wanted to sort of open up the conversation uh, on a couple of fronts. First, I wanted to ask, your, ask for your input and thoughts on any topics and sessions that you would like to see at the upcoming virtual event. Uh, we ask simply because we've got about half of it already filled. Uh, and we're working on the other half, but we want to make sure that we're not missing anything that folks on the ground really need. So if there's a session that you think you need, if there's a topic that you think needs to be addressed, we want to make sure that we're able to include it in this in this event. And then the second thing I'd like to discuss is just go around like we have previously and just provide a quick update on what's happening uh, within your program. I know we've, we've got about 16 folks on the line, so that should go pretty quick. So I just want to open it up. Uh, to a quick conversation and just see are there topics, ideas, and items that you would like to see on the program in April. John, I would like to go back to my staff and send an email to them. Okay, um, sure. Staff and then just send to you rather than me say something today. Okay. I think they would give a much better gauge of what, what is needed out there with their teams and yep. teaching staff. So if you're okay with that, I have much yeah. rather. Okay, very good. Them email you, can you give us a date that you, uh, like a cutoff date you would like to have that by? Yep, I'll, I'll tell you what we'll do. Um, okay. I will put together a quick online survey monkey that will okay. simply allow people to click on the link and input their information. And so you would even be able to forward that to your staff and they, even, and they could even input and that'll make them feel like they're part of the process too, right? As far as deciding that, all of that. So I'll get that together and I will get that out today. I would okay. suspect that a deadline for that, we would need that deadline to be, I would say, middle of next week. Like March the 3rd? I'd say March the 3rd, yeah. Wednesday, let's call it Wednesday of next week. Okay, thank you, John. That'd be very yeah. helpful. Um, and I, I suspect, I saw Cindy shaking her head. She thought that was a good idea. I suspect that everybody else thinks that's a good idea too. So that may uh, that may help us get to the bottom of that and get a sort of a broader consensus. Uh, if there is anything folks want to share now, we certainly welcome it, but otherwise we'll take Kim's suggestion and we'll send that around electronically. Okay, why don't we just go around quickly and provide a brief update on what's happening in your program in terms of um, in-person versus virtual, uh, any issues with health departments, anything you're sort of seeing. Everyone should have seen the information. We, we sent some stuff out about uh, Head Start teachers and staff being in group 1C. 
but then we saw late last week that there was an adjustment to that and people had been upgraded to the group 1B along with all other educators in the state. So you and your folks, uh, if you haven't pursued it already, uh, you're now gonna be in group 1B. So that is fantastic news for everybody. So I'm just gonna look on the list here. Kim, would you mind starting us off? Sorry to call Not it all. I knew you was going to start with me, John. <laughs> um, I don't have much. Uh, I've got a couple of staff here working today, so we're trying to get policies and procedures updated and all that. Uh, basically, we are working with the money that's from the state that was funded that's paying for the child care and just trying to be sure we're doing all that correctly and really have spent about the past hour and a half just going through that PowerPoint verbatim, being sure raises, how to do that just making sure we're not double dipping anywhere and how we're using that money. All of our um, center base is following districts. If districts are on AB schedules, that's what we're doing. If they're back full time, that's what we're doing. Child care's back. They've been back a long time. Full day, full year is back. Um, we did shut down last week, all but Friday due to weather, the ice, you just can't hardly do much with that. Uh, Dr. Meehan still has the OBEC office closed. Uh, we were in with the school districts getting our COVID vaccinations. So most of us go back week of March 8th to get our second shot. So I have a feeling Dr. Meehan may be looking at reopening the office in weeks or months to come, but that has not been out in writing yet. It's still closed through uh, February and I have a feeling we'll get something out this week about March and his intentions for that. Very good, thank you. Thank you. Cindy, why don't we come to you next? Figure out how to get unmuted here. <laughs> it's Monday. Um, we're still on a variety of hybrid schedules, again, depending on which district. Um, we're also scheduled to get our second dose of the vaccine this Friday. So we're excited that maybe things will get a little bit more back to normal after everybody has that opportunity. Um, other than that, we're just going with the flow and continuing to do everything we can to get people in uh, as much in person as possible. Um, going pretty smoothly all in all, so um, that's, that's what we have on, on our plate. Okay, thank you. Martina? Yes, we are the same way, John. Um, we have a variety of, of models out there from um, AB schedules to um, still conducting virtual services um, at this point. So again, it kind of like everyone else, I believe um, we're trying to follow the school district's calendars to the extent possible. Um, our issue is, you know, we had a lot of staffing issues due to the pandemic and, um, and a lot of vacancies right now due to um, school districts not being or have not resumed full capacity at this point. And so a lot of people had to make some really tough um, decisions. Yeah, and that reminds me, uh, you know, of course we have the job board and I think that that is starting to be embraced. I think we've got, there's probably 20, 23, 24 jobs on there right now. So uh, if folks want to share those with us, we're also promoting them on Facebook and Twitter and we can email them out as well. Okay, uh, Malcolm, what's happening at Bluegrass? He may have stepped away. All right, Renee, let's go to LKLP. Well, everything is the same that we've been doing all along. Um, we are still virtual. Um, Mr. Baker will be making a decision uh, closer to the end of the month, which I guess is this week, as to whether or not we'll go back in, uh, in person in March. Um, our staff started getting uh, their first COVID vaccines on, uh, on Friday when, when it opened back up. So Friday and Saturday, we had a whole lot of folks uh, get their first uh, first one. But uh, other than that, I mean, everything's about the same with us. There's a lot of Groundhog Day out there, isn't there? 
every day's the same. Okay, uh, let's go to Rachel. Can you hear us, Rachel? All right, how about Shonda? It's pretty much just like everyone else said. Um, our centers are open uh, back up to services in person, but of course they've been closed for the last week due to the weather. They're still closed today, but um, we're looking forward to getting them started. We only started back in person for two days until we had to shut down for the weather. Um, but, you know, it's going just one day at a time. We're working on getting our grants ready and getting those together and preparing for submission of those. All right, Malcolm, let's come back to you. Oh, can't hear you. <laughs> All right, Rachel. Yeah, I, I think I've got it. I guess I need to introduce myself. This is yeah. my, my fourth week at Lake Cumberland as the director. But um, I've actually been with this agency for about 15 years. And my most recent role was the family and community engagement manager. But uh, anyway, our, we're doing the same as we've been doing. We have our hybrid schedule with the classrooms. We follow the school schedules. Um, we don't have any centers closed down right now for COVID. I think they're all back in session, you know, except the places where the weather's not cooperating still. But, um, and we're getting our grant stuff together too, getting it ready to go. And that's just about where we're at. All right, thank you. Malcolm, do we want to try again? No? Okay. Uh, let's go to Rhonda. Good afternoon. Um, we are back in session today, finally. All of our Head Start classrooms are back in session. We do have one early Head Start that was not able to open today, but hopefully by the end of the week, they'll be back open. And as far as the COVID vaccine, I've actually had my second dose today makes my two weeks prior. So all right. I should be good. And all of our staff have actually had the opportunity. So those who wanted it, uh, they've, they've had the opportunity and should have already had their second one if they chose to go that route. Any idea just out of curiosity, what your people that did take it versus people that didn't take it is? Not a lot. Not there a lot, very, not a lot took it? Right, there was very few that took it. Interesting. Okay, Carla. She may have stepped away as well. No, I'm here. Oh, Can there you hear are. Me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I had to figure out this little device here. Um, we're, we're doing the same thing, uh, everyone else. We're still doing our hybrid uh, model two days a week. Uh, last week we were out for snow. Uh, I've had several staff, including myself, that have received the vaccine. Uh, as soon as I put in Community Action Head Start, I immediately got a text back and had an appointment scheduled the next day, but of course it snowed. So, um, But it, things are going well. Uh, we're just uh, moving right along. All right. Uh, Brandy was having trouble with her microphone, so she had uh, written that as soon as their roads are clear and they're back in the orange, uh, they are back in the orange. So they are back in two days a week. So right now, uh, and I think Brandy, maybe you meant 50-50 is term in terms of the vaccine. So uh, that's what's happening down in Lincoln County. Justin, do you want to add anything to LKLP? No, I think Renee covered everything, but thank you. Yes, sir. And Libby, do you want to share anything else from Lake Cumberland? I'm going to take that as a no. All right, gang, I appreciate you all taking some time to join us today. And I'm going to send out that information about the sessions um, really as soon as we get off of this call so that folks can have plenty of time to consider that and um, just sort of share what their thoughts and ideas are. So with that, oh, we've got another Sarah. Sarah John Malcolm, Malcolm shared in the chat. Oh, there he is. All right. Uh, if everybody would look at the chat, you'll get a, uh, a sense of what's happening at Bluegrass. Malcolm, let's type that in. Thank you very much, sir. 
It looks like um, bluegrass, we, they've not received COVID vaccines. They are in person with some families choosing virtual and they're in the process of submitting their Head Start continuation grant, but overall things are going well. Outstanding, thanks Malcolm, sorry we had the issue there. Okay, is there anything else that anybody would like to add to our uh, quick little call today? All right, hearing none, I'm going to go ahead and adjourn us. I appreciate everyone making the time. And I know that these calls are sometimes long and sometimes short, but I hope they're always useful. So we will speak with everyone soon, and I'll get that out to you this afternoon. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week.